How can we predict the severity in acute pancreatitis? What is the Balthazar score or the CT severity index? What is Ranson's criteria? How about the modified Glasgow score? There are a ton of scores out there, lots of ways that we can find out how severe acute pancreatitis is. Today, we're gonna go through it all. Let's do it. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name's Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon, and today we're gonna to get comfortable with looking at the severity for acute pancreatitis. Now, we've done a video on the causes of acute pancreatitis. We went through, I get smashed. We did another video talking about the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis, and I went through the history, the physical exam, the important labs, and of course, the imaging that can help us make that diagnosis. We're gonna talk about the treatment, but before that, I thought it would be good to go through the severity and how we can predict it, because this is something that as a medical student, I was always asked, what is the Ranson's criteria? Or what is the modified Glasgow score? And as a practitioner, so as a surgeon taking care of kids, specifically for me, but as a surgeon taking care of anybody with acute pancreatitis, it's important to know if and how we could predict severity early in that course. So today, that's what we're gonna do. Now, why would we wanna do that? Well, we know that acute pancreatitis has a very high mortality, so two to 24%, depending on is this mild, moderate, or severe. And well, let's get to that. So we talked about last time in the diagnosis part about mild, moderate, severe. Okay, so mild, moderate, severe. What? A, how do you know the difference between the two? Now, I gave you some definitions, but what we didn't do is we didn't kind of dive into the why. So why is something mild, moderate, or severe has to do with two big things, and that is organ failure or complications. All right, now we got to define both of those. So what is organ failure and what are complications, okay? Now, first, let's look at organ failure. So how do we define that? Well, we can define organ failure as a score greater or equal to two using the modified Marshall scoring system. So what is the modified Marshall scoring system? Okay, well, I got that right here. Okay, so if you check this table out, you can see that we're gonna use three systems. So the cardiac system, the renal system, and the respiratory system. Okay, well, let's look at respiratory first. Well, we look and we get a score based on the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio. And as that goes down, which indicates more support, we're gonna have an increasing score. When we look at the renal system, we can see we're gonna measure the serum creatinine. And as the serum creatinine starts to go up, we're gonna get an increasing score. Then finally, for cardiac, we're gonna look at systolic blood pressure. Now, as the systolic blood pressure goes down, and it's either fluid responsive or non-fluid responsive, we're gonna see an increasing score. So, we add this up. If that score is greater or equal to two, then we are in organ failure. And we're gonna go through those definitions of mild, moderate, and severe pancreatitis one more time so you, so you got it. But what's that, what was that second thing? All right, I talked about a second thing. Well, that second thing is complications. So what are the possible complications that we can have in acute pancreatitis? When we look at complications, we're looking at four major local complications, okay? So this is specific to the pancreas. Now, we can have a peripancreatic fluid collection. We can have a pseudocyst. We can have an acute necrotic collection or we can have walled off necrosis. Now let's go through each of these. And before we get to that, we should really define a couple of different terms because these are important. And that is the difference between interstitial edematous pancreatitis, okay, and necrotizing pancreatitis. Well, interstitial edematous pancreatitis is when we have acute inflammation of the pancreas. Now we learned how to define that earlier, but we have acute inflammation of the pancreas, but we have no necrosis. Now, necrotizing pancreatitis, that's acute inflammation with pancreatic necrosis, and that's gonna be much more severe, much sicker patient, okay? Now, let's get to each of these complications, each of these local complications. So first is that peripancreatic fluid collection. Well, what is that? Well, that is a fluid collection around the pancreas that's diagnosed in four weeks 
from the time of injury. So any fluid collection around the pancreas that doesn't include necrotic material under four weeks from the time of diagnosis is what we call a peripancreatic fluid collection. Well, what is a pseudocyst? Well, a pseudocyst is a walled off collection of fluid in and around the pancreas that's greater than four weeks from the time of diagnosis. Now, what is a acute necrotic collection? Well, an acute necrotic collection is if we have a walled off collection of fluid and necrotic pancreas less than four weeks from the diagnosis, and walled off necrosis is kind of, you know, parallel to a pseudocyst. So the, this is if we have fluid and necrotic pancreatic tissue that's walled off, and that's diagnosed greater than four weeks from the time of diagnosis. And this, this timing and these definitions is gonna be important to how we approach these in the treatment phase of acute pancreatitis. Now let's go back and let's see if we can now fully understand the differences between mild, moderate, and severe acute pancreatitis. So mild is if we have acute inflammation of the pancreas, we've made the diagnosis. What does that mean? We have two out of three important things. We have number one, a history and physical exam that is consistent with acute pancreatitis. We have labs, so amylase or lipase greater than three times the upper limit of normal, or we have imaging that is diagnostic of acute pancreatitis. If we have two of those three things, then we have a diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. Now, how severe is it? Well, it's mild if we see no organ failure and no local complications. So no peripancreatic fluid collection, no acute necrotic collection, and of course, a modified Marshall score of less than two. All right, so that is mild acute pancreatitis. Now, what is moderate? Well, moderate is if we get transient organ failure that lasts for less than 48 hours, we have systemic or local complications that persist longer than 48 hours, or we have sterile necrosis. Now, how can we get a good idea if that necrotic collection is sterile or infected? Well, first is by looking at the patient. So are they febrile? Are they diaphoretic? Are they in signs of sepsis or septic shock? Do we have evidence of current and ongoing infection or bacteremia? On our cross-sectional imaging, do we see gas within that necrotic Fluid, that necrotic fluid collection. That could be a sign of bacteria replicating, giving off gas, and that's a sign of infection. Okay, so if we have sterile necrosis, that patient's gonna fit within the moderate acute pancreatitis severity index, okay? And then severe acute pancreatitis is if we have organ failure that's lasting longer than 48 hours, or we have infected pancreatic necrosis. Now, last time I did talk about critical acute pancreatitis, but I really think that is just a sicker patient with severe acute pancreatitis. I wanna make it a little bit easier for you, but that critical acute pancreatitis could be somebody with organ failure lasting longer than 48 hours and infected pancreatic necrosis. So now that we understand the definitions, okay, and we can confidently say somebody has moderate or mild or severe, and we know what the complications are, and we know what organ failure means, we can get into predicting severity, and we start with that by just understanding some risk factors. So what are risk factors for more severe acute pancreatitis? Well, one is older age. So we know that patients that are greater than 75 years old have a 15-fold risk of dying within two weeks of diagnosis compared to a patient that is under the age of 35. And if we look further out, so let's say three months, that patient that's greater than 75 years old has a 22-fold risk of dying compared to a younger patient under the age of 35. Looking at alcohol, if we have alcohol-induced pancreatitis, we have an increased risk of more severe disease. Time interval. So if we have a really rapid onset of acute pancreatitis, and that means the duration of symptoms to hospital admission of less than 24 hours, those patients have an increased risk of more severe pancreatitis. Obesity is a risk factor for more severe disease, but not only is it a risk factor for more severe disease, obesity increases our risk of systemic complications, local complications, and death in a diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. 
And last is organ failure. So we know that early and persistent organ failure in a diagnosis of acute pancreatitis increases our hospital length of stay, and it also increases our mortality. Okay, so think about these things when you're evaluating your patient, and that is age, obesity, the time interval, alcohol-induced pancreatitis, or of course, organ failure. Those are just five things that increase our risk of more severe disease. And now we get to scores. Scores in predicting acute pancreatitis can make your head spin. Why? Because they're hard to remember. And another reason is because there are so many of them. All right, we got the Balthazar score. If you, that's also called the CT severity index. We have Ranson's criteria. I'm going to go through that in just a second. We got the modified Glasgow score. We have the harmless score. We have the uh, BISAP score. There are so many different scores that it's difficult to know which one to use. And furthermore, which ones are actually useful? Okay, so I'm gonna go through that after I go through some of these scores. Not gonna go through all of them, but I will put some links in the description below so you can check that out. So first, let's do Ranson's criteria. So Ranson's criteria is probably the first one that you learn in medical school, the first one that you got questioned on when you were that third year medical student in the operating room, the attending said, hey, what are all Ranson's criteria? And uh, you just had to memorize them. So let's go through this one first. I'm gonna put up the table here, and this is measurements, either clinical parameters or laboratory measurements at zero hours and 48 hours. So at zero hours, we have age greater than 55 giving us a point, a white cell count greater than 16,000, a blood glucose greater than 200 milligrams per liter, a lactate dehydrogenase level greater than 350, or an AST level of greater than 250. At 48 hours, now we're gonna look at a bunch of laboratory measurements. So, a hematocrit fall of greater than 10%, a BUN that is increased by greater than five milligrams per microliter, or 1.8 millimoles per liter, a serum calcium that is less than eight milligrams per deciliter, a PaO2 of less than 60 millimeters mercury, a base deficit of greater than four milliequivalents per liter, or fluid sequestration of greater than six liters. Well, that is a mouthful, and what does that mean? That means if you have a score of less than three, your mortality risk is 3%. If you have a score that's between three and six, your mortality risk about 15%, and if you have a score greater than six, then your mortality risk increases to over 40%. Now the trouble with Ranson's criteria is remembering it, and fortunately now we have our iPhones, or we have our Androids, or we have MD Calc, and so we can just put these in, but if you wanna remember it, like everything in surgery or medicine, there are acronyms, and there are a bunch of ways to remember this. You can use GA law, so that's glucose, age, LDH, AST, white cell count, and that's for those zero hour criteria. You can use C Hobbs, like Calvin and Hobbs, for the criteria at 48 hours. You can use Rasher as kind of a word to remember a few of them, not all of them, but a few of them. And of course, Pants on Fire is another one, and I can put all of these in the description below. So that is Ranson's criteria. So clinical laboratory parameters at zero hours and 48 hours that can give us a risk of mortality in that patient with acute pancreatitis. Now let's move on to the Apache 2. So the Apache 2 was originally developed for critically ill patients with acute pancreatitis in the intensive care unit. And the Apache 2 score is made up by looking at 12 different clinical parameters. Things like temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, arterial pH, these things, all 12 of them are put together, and you can look at a score. Now, how do we use that score? Well, a score of less than eight may give you a low mortality, so lower than 4%, whereas a score greater than eight can give you a higher mortality around 14%. Another paper showed that scores under nine have a very low risk of mortality, while scores of greater than 13 have a much higher risk of mortality. Now, the problem with the Apache 2 score is it's difficult to use because there are so many parameters and not all of those parameters, for example, arterial pH, are always measured. So that's kind of a tough one to use clinically, but it's important historically when we look at these scores that help us predict the severity of acute pancreatitis. 
Titus. Okay, so we've done the Ranson score. All right, do you remember all of those? You got it? We've done the Apache 2 score. Now what is next? So now let's move on to the Balthazar score. Okay, now maybe saying that wrong, you can also look at this as the CT severity index. And so what are we gonna do with this Balthazar score? So we are gonna do two things. Number one is we're gonna grade the severity of pancreatitis from A to E, and then we're gonna grade the amount of pancreatic necrosis present. Now I'm gonna put up the scoring system right here and you can see that if we have an A grade, that is a normal pancreas, that gets a score of zero. A B grade is enlargement of the pancreas, a score of one. C is inflammatory changes, that's a score of two. A D is a peripancreatic fluid collection, so we defined that earlier, okay, that gives you a score of three. And an E is greater or equal to two collections, that gives you a score of four. Now we add that to the pancreatic necrosis. So if there is no pancreatic necrosis, we get a score of zero. Less than 30% gives us a score of two. 30 to 50% is a score of four, and greater than 50% necrosis is a score of six. Now what does that mean? We can use this index, severity plus the amount of pancreatic necrosis, to give us an idea of mortality. So if we have a score greater or equal to five, all of these risks go up. So mortality is eight times more likely. You're 17 times more likely to have an increased hospital length of stay, and you're 10 times more likely to need surgery or a pancreatic necrosectomy. And we're gonna be talking about that in the treatment of pancreatitis video. Now I saved the best for last, and that is the BICEP score. So what is the BICEP score? Well, this is nice because this is a bedside score that can be done to predict severity of acute pancreatitis. And so in this score, we score one point for each of the following. So if we have a BUN or a blood urea nitrogen greater than 8.9 millimoles per liter, Second is impaired mental status. Third is SIRS, so if systemic inflammatory response syndrome is present. Fourth is an age greater than 60. And then finally, if there is a pleural effusion. So we can take that, give one point for each of those, and that is gonna give us a score. Now, how do we use that score? So we know with the BICEP score that if we have a score greater than three, we have an increased risk of mortality. Now. We've gone through a bunch of these. I haven't gone through all of them because it just seems like the list is endless, but we've gone through a bunch of these and the question is, I'm sure you're wondering, which score to use? Well, there's a few papers out there. There's a few free ones available. I'm gonna put links to those in the description, so check those out. But which score should we use? And I'm gonna look at this paper right here. So in this paper, they looked at using the Ranson score, the modified Glasgow score, the BICEP score, or the Apache 2 in younger patients and elderly patients with acute pancreatitis. And what did they find? Well, they found that the elderly, as we talked before, are at an increased risk of more severe acute pancreatitis. They also found that across the board, the BICEP was the most appropriate score to use. And that had to do with ease of use. And those clinical parameters and laboratory measurements are easy to acquire. And finally, for some support of Ranson and Apache 2, these are more appropriate in younger patients. However, the Apache 2 with those 12 clinical variables is difficult to get all of that data, all right? So BICEP is really a go-to scoring system if we wanna help predict mortality in those patients with a diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. And the last thing I wanna get to is there, are there any particular labs that can give us an idea of the severity of acute pancreatitis. Well, one I talked about previously, and that's C-reactive protein, or CRP. And we know if we have a level of greater than 150 milligrams per liter at 48 hours, we have an increased risk of severe disease. All right, the next one is procalcitonin. So procalcitonin is a chemical that is released from cells in infection and injury, and depending on the level, we can get an idea of increased severity and also increased risk of infection. So we have a, if we have an increasing procalcitonin, and this usually peaks at 24 to 48 hours, and we can look at those levels and say, well, mild would be less than 0.5 nanograms per milliliter, moderate would be 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter, and high or more severe would be in greater than 2 nanograms per milliliter. And as those levels go up, 
our risk of infected pancreatitis is going up. And as we learned earlier in that mild, moderate, severe acute pancreatitis, infected pancreatic necrosis is automatically severe acute pancreatitis. And that carries with it a higher risk mortality. Okay, so I hope you enjoy that today. We have done a couple of videos on acute pancreatitis, but it's such an important topic that I thought adding in this video on predicting the severity of disease was really important. So if you haven't checked out the causes of acute pancreatitis video, check that out. If you haven't watched the diagnosis video, you gotta do that right now. That one's a really important one. I hope you enjoyed this one on predicting severity, going through a few of the different scores, how we can remember them. And then next, I'm gonna go through the treatment of acute pancreatitis, and I'm gonna also talk about that pancreatic necrosectomy and the indications for that, all right? so. If you have any questions, definitely leave them below. I love engaging with you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, that really shows me that I'm on the right track with these and I'm providing value. Share it with your friends. As always, stay safe, study hard. I'll see you next time.